Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning. I'm Alex, I'm gonna be the moderator and uh, I'll, I'll just quickly introduce my part of the team. Uh, I, I work with Wendy and let's see, Jyoti is here and is Sean here? I can't see Sean. Yep. There's Sean, okay. So it's Wendy, Jyoti, Sean and I, we work with QCP and uh, just to recap, we started this group about a year ago, coming up on, in March will be the anniversary. And it was uh, you know, just an idea to take something that had been anticipated to be an in-person meeting online. It's had, I'm glad to say that it's had legs and it's lasted for a full year by now. And we're very grateful for that. So thank you to all the loyal members and we always are, are looking for new members. So if you folks know people who you think would be interested in joining the group, please put them in touch with me and Wendy and we'll sign them up. We're also always looking for guest speakers, people who have an interesting topic to talk about and they can, we can allocate 10 to 15 minutes of each session to them and then uh, they get an opportunity to talk about what interests them and, and then have questions asked. Uh, what we start by doing in these groups is a short, uh, and I emphasize short, go round where you just give a, you know, 30 second pitch or pitch capsule description of what you do. And also I'd like to ask this time for you to say what you hope to get out of the group in terms of, you know, a goal, maybe uh, an objective. Is it a business connection? Is it to make friends? Is it to find a date? You know, whatever it is that you're uh, hoping to achieve. And uh, also towards the end of the group uh, today, what I'd like to do is introduce a time where, and just think about this, where uh, aside from the one-on-ones that you've uh, you know, been able to have with people in the group, if you can identify uh, something that has come out of the group in a concrete business fashion for you, mention that. Like if you happen to make a connection to one of the members of the group and it made it, 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 it <clears throat> resulted in business or something beneficial, do a shout out to that. <clears throat> and I'd like to start posting those. So we have some, uh, you know, a bit of a track record and data to show. So with that being said, uh, we'll start the go round. Uh, I'm just gonna go based on my uh, view of the screen. So Jerry Schwartz, would you mind doing that brief introduction and your goal? Okay, very good. Good morning all, my name is Jerry Schwartz, Jerry the Geek for all your computer needs. I do computer repair for small businesses and homeowners. Um, is your computer running slow? You think you may have a computer virus looking to upgrade or looking for a new computer? I can help you there. Also, if your company is a small to medium sized business looking for a website, I can connect you to, to the people that can do that for you. And I'm hoping to um, make connections here to see if they need anyone that needs help with computers. Okay. And uh, Stephen. Hi, good morning, everybody. Stephen Karp with the Variable Promotions. We are a full service commercial printer as well as a distributor of promotional items. Um, anything that bears your name for image recognition. Um, what am I looking for? I am looking for an introduction into a not for profit. Um, good times or bad times, not for profits in my world are still printing. They're still producing paraphernalia. Uh, so if anyone has a connection to a not-for-profit, Stephen Karp, Variable Promotions. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. And Michelle, we'll skip you because you're gonna be giving a presentation. Neil, would you mm -hmm. mind giving your introduction? Sure. Good morning, thanks, Alex. Uh, oh, wait, maybe, I, am I, I the right Neil? Neil Levin. <laughs> no, <laughs> right, I forgot. <laughs> no, Neil, you go, you go. Okay, Neil Fleischman, go ahead. Are you sure? I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I screwed it all up. I forgot there were two Neils. Uh, good morning, Alex. Thanks for having me again. Thanks to Wendy for always uh, inviting me. I'm Neil Fleischman. I'm the area president at Payday. We're a <coughs> payroll, HR, and employee benefits firm serving um, a variety of types of companies, small, medium, large. Nonprofits are one of my specialties. Um, I've been a longtime board member at Queens Botanical Garden. I'm on the nonprofit committee at Queens Chamber of Commerce, and I run a nonprofit think tank called Mission Control. Uh, as far as the group it itself, um, I I'm looking. I'm always looking to find good resources for my clients and other people's in my network. And if uh, business happens along the way, that's great too. Thank you. And now Neil Levin. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Neil Levin, Webline Media Group. We are a going on 26 year old uh, web design and online marketing firm. Um, I've worked on over a thousand 
website projects in 100 plus industries. And um, our services are website design, redesign, um, Google ad campaigns, um, on-site SEO, local SEO, and all the other stuff that you can think of that concerns your website. Thank you. And, Josie. And one more oh, thing. And? I'm looking for everybody here to make introductions to Steve Karp for not-for-profits so he could also mm -hmm. introduce me to them. Okay. <laughs> and that's a picture of one hand washing the other. Uh, Josie? Good morning, everyone. My name is Jose Nitineo. I am the president at Jose Michel Events. What we do is that we are um, an event planning company. We plan um, wedding, social events, and corporate events, whether it's in person or virtual. And we are looking to connect with people that wants to start a business within the wedding industry, uh, whether it's a uh, a baker or a florist, a photographer, we are gonna be launching JME U University starting in March. So we will like help um, getting the word out. Thank you. John Rafferty. Morning everyone, John Rafferty from WatchGuard 24 seven. I'm a retired Lieutenant from the NYPD and the owner of a full service security guard company. We provide security guards, concierge and fire safety directors to residential commercial industries throughout New York and New Jersey. Uh, what I'm looking for is introductions into property managers on the residential or commercial side, as well as the educational um, sections as well. And uh, we service over 70 schools here in New York. And we're now able to kind of make that jump from the grammar schools and high schools into the colleges. So small colleges would be a great introduction. Thank you. Thank you. Tim Daniels, welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. What I do is I help people live and perform better for longer through getting the uh, adopting the Beamer medical product and that by health wellness fitness professionals for better, faster, more complete outcomes for their clientele and improving their own profitability. Uh, what I'm looking for is one's uh, connections and conversations to those health wellness fitness professionals. Uh, go to market partners to collaborate and service them, servicing them, and then other value-added services that might be applicable to um, to that clientele. Certainly, like to hear more about that product. Uh, let's see, we got Neil, uh, Mara, Mara, oh, uh, oh Good. <laughs> My name is getting butchered all the time, <laughs> but you said it very well. I, I, never, I never thought it was complicated, though. Anyway. Mara Ohanian, Cruise Planners. It's a small franchise uh, affiliated with American Express Travel. We actually represent American Express Travel. Um, as I said, it's a full service travel agency, which means I can help you with all kinds of travel. The river cruises being very high on my list, number one on my list. Um, what I'm what I'm hoping to get from the group. Well. There is a short term, immediate, and probably long term. Short term, I'm very much looking forward to have a nice breakfast with Sonia tomorrow, right, Sonia? <laughs> and long term, on a more serious note, um, you know, all these all these groups, whether it's a paid group, free group, we're here for business, right? To increase our business, uh, uh, so we're looking for referrals to help each other um, to increase our businesses, and if relationships are forged, friendships are forged. That's a wonderful sort of side effect of, of this group. So um, I'm probably gonna do like we did in BNI, like for what I want for this week, because mine is harder to narrow down. So this week, think about someone who, you know, who who is an avid ocean cruiser, but is kind of reluctant because of the pandemic to go on a bigger ocean. Ship, so maybe they can uh, talk to me about smaller ships and river cruises. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Uh, Benjamin. It always takes me a second to get to the unmute button. Uh, thank you uh, again for having me on. So Benjamin Horowitz, I'm the CEO of BSB Consultants. We specialize in group health insurance for organizations from two employees to a couple thousand, trying to find the most uh, suitable uh, financial uh, and best outcome for the organization and for its employees. So if there's a need for your organization, please uh, reach out. Let me try and help you. Um, I'm a big connector myself. I'm sure there's plenty of folks on here that know me that I, that I talk to. I've referred people to. Um, 
if there's anything that I can do to ever help people, if I understand your business and I know how to try and help you and help you grow your business, I will try to do my best to, uh, to do that. So, uh, you know, if anyone wants to talk, have a conversation, let me know. Thank you. Mr. Marola. Good morning, everyone. Sorry about that. Um, my name is Rob Marola. I'm a, a graphic designer and I help customers grow their business through using the tools of digital marketing. Um, I can help troubleshoot um, any kind of uh, issues you're having with your website. Um, but uh, my primary focus is uh, uh, rebranding companies and uh, logo design. And uh, I'm just looking to broaden my, uh, my network and uh, thank, the, thank Wendy for inviting me. Thank you. Sonia, welcome back. You say that every week, Alex. <laughs> Kind of concerned. Do I disappear in your mind and reappear? Um, Sonia Sala, uplifting nonprofits. I do anything related to fundraising. I'm a speaker, trainer, coach, helping nonprofits to double their fundraising results. And what I look to do at all these events is just to find out what people's passions are and connect them. I say welcome back because I'm always happy to see you. That was good, Alex. That's a good comment. Uh, Sam, welcome. Welcome back, Sam. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. <laughs> Good morning, Sam Rakapiori. I'm a certified meeting professional and founder of Brilliant Event Box. I create kits and gift boxes that complement virtual events. Um, what sets me apart is all of the products that go into the boxes are sourced from local small businesses in New York and New England. I'm looking for companies who would like to send their employees and appreciation gift box with a minimum of a 10 box order. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Joe DiStefano, I think you're a, a first time visitor. Uh, yeah, hi, good morning, everybody. My name is Joe DiStefano. Uh, I'm the uh, founder and president of c uh, c Culinary Consulting. What I do is uh, help food and beverage brands uh, in Queens and beyond to find their story and communicate that to the media. I came to that uh, by virtue of having uh, been a food expert uh, in Queens for the past 20 years. And so it's been sort of a shift during the uh, pandemic. I'm avoiding that uh, pivot word for the moment. And what I'm looking to do here on the group is find greater opportunities to be of service. Wendy, thanks for inviting me. Thank you. Happy here. I also want to mention Joe has a book called 111. What's the exact title? 111 things to do in Queens, to see in Queens. 100, since you asked, 111 <laughs> yes. places in Queens that you must not miss. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very, very bad at paraphrasing. <laughs> Rachel? Rachel Egner at Egner. Hi, Rachel. Hi. Good morning, Alex. Morning. Good morning, everybody. My name is Rachel Kellner and I am the co-owner of Eigner Chocolates. We help clients by uh, making an impression and building relationships by offering year-round corporate gifts. We are one of the oldest chocolate shops here in New York City and we both manufacture and retail all of our chocolate in-house using recipes that have been used and passed down over the generations. And I'm specifically looking for introductions to marketing directors. Thank you. Thomas Farrell. Good morning, thanks Alex. Um, good morning, folks. Tom Farrell. I'm the business law attorney specializing in regulatory compliance, some employment issues, and contracts. Um, and speaking of contracts, I'd like to meet independent contractors um, or the owner of a business that's in the service, service company. Um, if you're tired of using somebody else's agreement, somebody else's contract, I can fix that for you and build you in some protections and give you uh, an agreement that you can use over and over again with a minimum of modification. That's the kind of thing I do. And you have a, a very interesting PowerPoint uh, deck that you showed me, uh, depending on what kind of time we have today. If you have it available, maybe you could share it. If not, maybe next week, if you're available. But that was, I thought that was really helpful, uh, you know, guidance for independent contractors who are preparing, uh, you know, letters of agreement, et cetera. Uh, Tony. Good morning. Um, my name is Tony Foy from LaGuardia Performing Arts Center, part of LaGuardia Community community college. Uh, what we do is we provide um, performance space for 
within the college and without the college. And one of the things that we're really, we are looking for when things open up is for people to actually know that we exist, that there is a, a performing arts center in Queens. You don't have to go to Manhattan and that we actually have two lovely spaces that you can rent for very reasonable prices. Thank you. Martin, I see you're at your weekend home. So yes. uh, let us know. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'll be there on Saturday, actually. Sure. I have a small event. <laughs> um, <laughs> Martin Ridges, NKR Specialty and um, Farmers Insurance Group. So I work on you know, commercial insurance as well as personal insurance. And also really enjoy doing a lot of specialty stuff. My, a lot of my career has been working to do specialty types of risks, um, trying to ensure some of the unusual things that you can imagine out there. Um, and also a lot of things to do with events. There's a number of event people here. So I, you know, I put together standard liability insurance as well as cancellation insurance. And also if you're trying to promote and get people back interested in your um, business, you can use things like prize indemnity, um, insurance to offer promotional ideas. And I work with a number of promotional companies too, to help businesses push their names out there um, and get more traction to them Thank as you. well. Thank you. Lovely home. Uh, David. <laughs> Good morning. Thanks, Alex. Uh, Dave Solano. I'm a owner of Solano Associates and also president of a nonprofit, um, InfraGuard. InfraGuard is a public-private partnership with the FBI and it's all about protecting our nation's critical infrastructure of which our businesses, small and large, make up the largest percentage of our, of our commerce. So I'm uh, available to assist and, and uh, consult with in anything to do with your information security, cybersecurity, your complete um, concerns relative to your, your computing environment, whether it be a, a small home office or a larger office that has uh, multiple tentacles out there and an increased vulnerability from all of the nastiness that's going on. Wow. Uh, I, I will offer this group a free uh, consult for discussing. I consider myself sort of a cyber general contractor. So like for instance, if you have a desktop issue or hardware problems, I'll go to my colleague, Jerry Schwartz, um, you know, refer you to him to take care of, of those issues. If you have greater networking concerns or, or deeper concerns or if you have a suspicious incident that you need to possibly bring in law enforcement, let me know. I'll point you in the right direction. Thank, Thank you. you. Fascinating. And then there's another David. Uh, we have two needles, two Davids. Another David. There we go. Yes. Hi. How are you doing? Thank you, Alex. Uh, my name is David Springer. I'm from Connexion Inc. i the CEO. Uh, we are in the IT, a full IT shop. Uh, we provide IT services for, you know, the, um, the tri-state area. And we also provide uh, voice over IP uh, for those people who are looking to have uh, people working remotely and they want to um, still have their phone system. So we can provide a, a hosted VoIP, that kind of stuff. So what I'm looking for essentially is, um, you know, to connect with some people because, you know, we've been, um, we've been around for the last uh, 14 years, but, uh, you know, we, we haven't reached out. We've been doing a lot of work uh, privately uh, but now we're looking to spread our wings. So we're just looking to connect with some people in Queens and see uh, what IT services they may need and what voice over IP services they may require. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, Nancy Vargas. Good morning, Alex. Good morning, everyone. Nancy okay. Vargas, CEO of DH2, Chauffeur Transportation. What we do is provide safe and private ground transportation service. So if you or anyone that you know is heading to the airport, and yes, people are now heading to the airport. Uh, I'm happy to report that uh, we're seeing an uptick in uh, travelers, uh, mainly on the leisure side, a lot of families uh, heading out to Florida um, or to you know, various places. So uh, if you have a need uh, to go to the airport, or you have an event that you're attending, we would love to help you, uh, as well as a mobile auto detailing service. So as we see the sun come out and the snow go away, I'm sure you wanna drive your vehicles uh, sparkling clean, and we're happy to come to your home and provide you that service. Uh, my ask for the group is that I've had the pleasure to uh, truly meet so many of you. However, if we haven't met, 
let's plan a one-to-one. We'd love to get to know you and see how we can collaborate and help each other. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. And uh, Divina, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yes, you are. <clears throat> Hi, Alex. Good morning, everyone. My name is Davina Trevisana. I work for NPD Logistics. I'm a partner. We provide messenger van, trucking, post office pickups, deliveries, domestic, international, freight forwarding, warehousing with GPS tracking. So if you need anything delivered, tri-state area, worldwide, give me a shout or storage. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Tress. Good morning. I am Tress, one of the moms at Mom's Kitchens NYC. We are a bakery house and catering. We provide fresh baked breads, brownies, and about 32 different assorted flavor cook uh, brownies. And we are excited to be a part of this group. Our ask this morning is just to connect with folks who need to send out gift boxes or fresh baked goods to their clients for a Zoom party. And we are excited because we connected and learned so much about the great businesses in this area. And we are thrilled to be a part of this group. I look forward to communicating with all of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, and just a reminder, if, if people haven't uh, officially joined the group by going to the mobile cause site, do so because what that means is you'll get the notices as they go out each week with the name of the, the guest speaker, with the roster of the members in case you want to connect with people. So do make that uh, short effort to just connect and you'll, you'll get all that information. And then last but not least, we have Wendy, our, uh, our fearless leader. Go ahead. You're the fearless leader. Yeah, right. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I am I'm Wendy Gennaro from Queen Centers for Progress. I'm the director of development. And um, we're just so thrilled to see everybody every week here. Um, and I just want to say thank you to Tom Farrell for helping uh, Sean and I out, uh, getting a contract together with our food delivery person for our upcoming event, Evening of Fine Food. So if any of you are not familiar with it, it's a 500 person in-person event that we are taking online. So we'll, we will be delivering food to uh, households all over the five boroughs the day of the event and offering a fun opportunity to engage with us online. Um, thinking I might want a magician. So if anyone knows a magician who may want to, uh, <laughs> <could> <laughs> may want to donate their services or we are paying also. Um, and the, the beauty of this year's event, even though we can't meet in person, is we're going to try to replicate the energy of the event online, but also we're working with restaurants, um, Agner's, Agner's and Mums are part of it this year. They'll be uh, handling the dessert portion of the meals. Um, so we're working with restaurants and we're paying people. Usually the restaurants donate the food, but this year we're actually paying for the meals because we wanna help everybody in the community that's always been around to, in helping us all these years. So it's our way of trying to uh, sustain our community as well. So I hope some of you will join us. It'll be a lot of fun. And um, yeah. So what Wendy had to say about Tom at the beginning of her uh, talk was the example of a testimonial, which I hope some of you will have toward the end of this group. That, you know, if you, if you can think of any kind of uh, positive connection you've made, please share that with the group at the end. So now we're gonna move on to the presentation. Uh, where's Michelle, where did she go? There's Michelle, okay. So Michelle, I'm going to uh, spotlight you and I'm going to, I think, did Wendy, did you make her a co-host? I did. Okay, so Michelle, were you going to um, do, do a brief introduction uh, and tell us what you're gonna talk about that. And then if you wanna share the screen, you have the capability to do so. All right, I will actually go right ahead and um, test that now just to make sure that I can pull up my slides. Yep, there they are. Uh, you see that? Okay. Oh, this is funny. So I actually, um, when I shared my slides, I lost you, but hopefully you, do you still see me? We can see you. We do. You see me. All right, great. Um, well, thanks everybody for having me here today. My name is Michelle Peralta and I am Josie's other half. So I am from Josie Michelle Events. And today what we're going to be talking about is how to use these times of crisis and change as fuel for innovation and new opportunities. Um, so I, I think that this is a really important topic because I'm very hopeful that crisis is behind us. However, uh, I think we're all aware that change is definitely ahead of us if we haven't experienced it already. With the pandemic, I think uh, all of our industries are impacted. I am obviously in events, but if you are in technology, education, the legal industry, catering, whatever it is that you do, there's definitely uh, a lot of change ahead. 
Um, so again, I am the co-owner and CEO of Josie Michelle Events. I am a certified wedding planner and I have over 20 years of experience with the event planning, um, both in weddings and in corporate events. I promise to be brief uh, within your period, so I'm just tracking my time here. Okay, so before we begin, <clears throat> excuse me, I thought it would be helpful to share an overview of Josie Michelle Events. Um, so how we started, Josie and I are two moms in the family who were always doing the events for everybody, um, for all the kids. We, it was just our passion. It's something that we loved. And somebody told us that this was a great business opportunity. <laughs> we had no idea that this was a business, but we, we loved to hear that. We were super happy. So in 2011, we launched Josie Michelle Events. So during normal times, we do weddings, birthdays, showers, and our services is full event planning or design or coordinating on the day of the event. Obviously that changed drastically last year. So right now what that looks like is it's more uh, virtual events. We're doing both, uh, we're still doing weddings and birthdays, but we've transitioned a lot more into the corporate side. So we're doing a lot of meeting management, um, conferences, workshops, and things like that. We've also, uh, Josie mentioned earlier, launched Josie Michelle Events University, which we start next week. And that is going to be geared towards new entrepreneurs who are entering the event industry um, and need to know how to get started. So we'll be sharing our 10 years of experience there. And we've also launched a professional networking event that we hold on a monthly basis. It's called Women in Weddings, so it is for everyone. And I'm sure Josie has invited you all, and we would love to see you there. As for our team, there are 15 of us. It is a family business, so they are all freelancers, and I'm going to say almost half of them are team members. And finally, our clients um, that we consider them the Josie Michelle Events family. And we're very proud to say that once people join our family, they really are, um, you know, they, they stay with us. Most of our businesses repeat business, whether they are couples, parents, or business owners. Our mission is to celebrate life, spread joy, and help others dream big. So before I move on to the meteor part of our presentation, I want to give you a quick sample of what our events look like pre-pandemic. And then towards the end of the presentation, I will show you one of the projects that we did during the pandemic. So I will, um, I'm going to share a very brief video and I'm just gonna ask you to let me know and I can't see you. So if you'll let me know uh, verbally if you're able to see this. Do you see uh, Ben and Jalisa? Yes. Yep. Nineteen, just a few months before everything changed. We all, none of us had any idea. And of course, in comes the pandemic. Now I will share just so you guys know what this looks like for us. In January and February of every year, um, we call that red winter uh, in the event industry. We're usually pretty quiet. There's not a lot happening. Most people aren't having parties during that period. But in 2020, miraculously, Josie and I were booked every single weekend, January, February, I think uh, New York pause was like the 15th of March on a Sunday. And we were so busy. We had to split our team um, into teams. We had multiple events the day before. We had a day on the day of New York pause and we had to um, obviously cancel. So all of a sudden our very book calendars became completely empty and we were faced like everybody else with something that we just, just never could have imagined. We experienced fear we experienced uncertainty, we experienced doubt, 
Um, we just didn't know what our next step was. Our clients had questions that we couldn't answer. Um, as we all can remember, there was a lot of misinformation out there. And so it was a very, um, very tricky period. Um, but of course, uh, if you own a business and you're leading a team, you have to pull it together pretty quickly. So, um, you know, today we're going to talk about a few strategies that Josie and I use for developing business during these, these crazy times and that we continue to use as we continue to see change in our industry. So um, these three strategies are leveraging your team's strengths, listening to your clients, and following your mission. So leveraging your team's strengths. Um, here, I think the smartest thing that, that Josie and I did was we were very honest. We weren't trying to be the fearless leader and tell our team like, oh, everything is fine. And uh, we know exactly what we're going to do because that wasn't true. So we were very transparent. We shared our concerns. We shared, uh, you know, we had to cut hours. We shared that we, we were honest about what was happening with our clients and everybody's changing plans. Um, we also just asked our team openly what we needed. You know, we needed support, we needed new ideas. So thinking outside of roles became very important. We all have maybe HR people, um, people who handle our finances, maybe social media. We, ha we have assigned roles to everybody in our team. But um, it's, it's very important, especially in a time like this, to think outside of the box and tap into other strengths that our team members have that we don't normally use, maybe because we don't normally need, which is you know, very unfortunate. Um, everybody can contribute in ways that you, we really can't imagine. And the only way to know that is when you actually ask questions and pull everybody in to discuss what the important issues are. When you collaborate, you'll find incredible creativity. So what we did was we applied mastermind principles uh, we, we scheduled meetings uh, to brainstorm. We actually uh, you know, made education increasingly important. Josie and I are always attending webinars and conferences. But last year, we decided to make sure that our teams were also doing the same, then sharing notes with us, telling us what they thought would be important action items that we could move forward on. We held each other accountable and we supported each other. Then listening to our clients. Uh, here, you know, again, this is going to be different in every industry, but you're observing their behaviors and their language. What are they asking? What are they concerned about? What are they posting on social media if you have that kind of relationship with them? Have they lost interest in the service or product that you're providing? Unfortunately, you know, some of this did happen because you don't really feel like partying when you're in the middle of a, in the middle of a pandemic. So what we did was we got personal. And we, um, you know, we, we always try to be very professional. We have great relationships with our clients. But in this case, we, we decided, you know, even if a person doesn't have an event, one of our clients doesn't have an event, they're not moving forward with their project or it's on hold. We had Zoom coffee dates and we shared our experiences personally, what was happening with us and our team, even with other clients. And we asked them to open up as well. Now, the interesting thing that happened here is that our clients started telling us things that they didn't share before. So for example, one of our clients, we were planning a birthday party for her children. When we had our coffee date, she opened up about how stressed she was that her team, she was based, she's based in Seattle, her team is in India. She's, she's concerned how the pandemic was going to impact their, their personal lives, you know, how they're feeling and also their professional lives and how they would be engaged at work. So we offered to do a team retreat for her. This was amazing. Um, her team bonded, uh, there, were, there was laughter, there was tears, and they ended up feeling increasingly loyal to the business and to this leader that invested in them in this way, in this time that was so crucial for them and their families. So as a result, we, our business became global after that, and we launched new services. And finally, um, following your mission. So here, here, you know, this is, this is a funny thing here. Um, I mentioned earlier our mission, celebrate life, spread joy, and help others think big. Josie and I find ourselves, you know, we, we love to do events. We love to see our couples when they walk into the room and they see what we've done for them, to see the families. That is where we feel that we are meeting our mission, 
knowing that we've created these lasting moments forever. And now all of a sudden we're on Zoom. And, you know, we felt a little down about it, honestly, in some points, like I, we just couldn't wait to do a normal event again. However, we found that if you stay on your purpose, you know what you're looking to do, you love what you do, you are still going to find a way to meet your mission. And that is exactly what happened. And we found that by being very creative and just changing the way we do things, we are still helping people um, experience those, those feelings and those lasting memories. Um, change your plan, but stick to your why. So here we found it was so important to be flexible, to be open-minded, um, to continue learning new things. We reached out to other people uh, in the industry. We reached out to our colleagues and we wanted to make sure that everybody was doing well and that we could continue collaborating. And we found that so many people got stuck because they didn't want to change the way they did things. Um, you know, we, I come to mind DJs that we love to work with who said, no, this can't be done online. And, you know, many DJs were doing it online. Um, so that, that's just an example in my industry. But that is, that is one of the things that we found was crucial to our survival. And then finally, revising your goals. So here, I'm the kind of person that if I set out a goal, I really want to meet that goal. If I make a to-do list, I want to do everything on my list. And I, I am just very driven to make sure that if, if something's on my calendar, I'm going to be there. I did not embrace, um, you know, the changing of the goals very well, but I, I remember clearly when a day that I just had that epiphany and I called Josie and I said, you know what, we wanted to do 60 events this year. We're not going to do 60 events this year. We're going to have to figure out a new goal that is going to, you know, make us feel happy and like we're progressing because that's always the goal, right? You want to keep moving forward. Um, so we revised that. And the other thing that we did is we looked back and we said, what kind of projects are on the back burner? What, uh, what did we always want to do before, you know, in the past that we didn't have time to do? Is there anything that we now have the opportunity or the time to do? And what happened here was we were able to network uh, more strategically, and we always wanted to increase, you know, the amount of networking we were doing. And that's how we found this wonderful group, which I think is an amazing example of all the things that we're talking about here today, because uh, we, we were hearing about your upcoming anniversary. So this was also born in the, in the pandemic times when you realized that there was a need for this community. And uh, we also, we, we started creating video content. That is something that as anybody here who's trying to create content for social media and you have all these great ideas and you know you're busy with your business and your clients and you don't have time. Well, 2020 gave us time. So this is one of the things that we focused on and it had amazing results. Um, so I, I shared before that we collaborated with our team and one of the questions that we asked them was, what does, what does our community and our team need right now? And they said they need humor, they need information, and they need connection. So all of this came full circle with our mission and our clients and our team. And, and with our team, we, we had what we call team challenges, and they would create either funny, funny videos just because to put out on social media, or um, we also created videos that were uh, sharing safety guidelines and information that people needed. And we created videos for YouTube answering questions about how the pandemic uh, impacted people's events and what they needed to keep in, in mind. So we interviewed Nancy, for example, who talked about the ability to now get married legally online. And that was a very important update and change that happened last year. So, you know, and how did this, you know, impact us? We checked this off our list. This was something that we wanted to do in the past, but also people started, we started to get new leads. People were reaching out to us because for the first time ever, they saw our personality, they met our team online and they got to see a different side of us. So that was, that was pretty significant for us. And it wouldn't have happened had we not been open um, and willing to change. All right, so those, those are our main tips, uh, the main tips that I wanted to share with you today. I do hope that our story inspired you in some way and that you were able to get some nuggets that you can apply. Um, I don't know if we're gonna have time for questions now, but if not, I've shared my contact information here. Also, I mentioned my, uh, I mentioned a couple of times today. Oh, I think I, I may have stopped sharing. I had one last video to share. Um, I mentioned earlier what our events look like pre-pandemic 
And I just wanted to leave you with how all of this collaboration that I've been talking about with our team and with our clients ended up looking like during the pandemic. I'm going to see if I still have the ability to share. I do. One, and this is just a one minute video, I promise. Just to meet you can take my eyes off of you. I love you, baby. And if it's quite alright, I need you, baby. To on these lonely nights, I love you, baby. Trust in me when I say, Oh, pretty. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you very much for having me. Of course. Anybody have questions for Michelle? I don't have a question, but I have a huge testimonial. I've had the pleasure to work with Josie and Michelle. Uh, not only are they colleagues, but they are dear friends of mine. And I've seen them uh, totally pivot their entire business model um, to doing fantastic virtual events. I've seen them in action uh, pre-pandemic. We've had the pleasure to do many weddings and events together. Uh, I've seen them in action, but it's been amazing how resilient they've been during this pandemic, where, where they generate their revenue, uh, for the most part, has been in live events and how they have uh, you know, done so many things, including uh, being my partners in the Wind Bridal events, where we as a team came together uh, to not only be a support to one another, because we were really, really down. Um, and as Michelle mentioned, didn't know what direction to go. And we were there for one another. And because of that, I'm so proud that we uh, launched our virtual bridal expo. So it's just um, amazing how resilient they are. I welcome you to please reach out to them, meet them, get to know them. They're amazing ladies. And I'm so happy to call them my friends. Thank you. That's what you call a testimonial. Okay, uh, so I, I have a question, Alex. Yeah. Um, Michelle, what are you hearing about the timeline for reopening venues and, and getting up to 100% capacity? So our next weddings, uh, traditional weddings are in April and our, our venues are looking positive. However, there are many changes. So it depends what you mean by open. They will not be full capacity. Uh, some venues are talking about uh, sh shifting um, time schedules, so you don't have all your all of your guests participating at the same time. Oh. You have to limit your numbers. Um, there's a lot of change to how you can handle your catering. So while events can move forward as early as this spring, it's definitely going to look very different uh, for a long time. Thank you. Hey, Michelle, Dave, I got a question. Have these uh, venues thought about doing a blend of both live limited and, and the virtual to include people who cannot attend? So I haven't heard of any venue that's taking the lead on that. However, hybrid events are huge right now. And so our clients are certainly thinking about that. And there are okay. many companies now handling streaming and it's going to be very popular. And I think that's one of those trends that's going to stay in our industry. Um, may I, may I, uh, Michelle, the, um, I'm a member of the CPCU and some other societies, and I, I want to confirm with you, absolutely, virtual events and live events, I think, are going to be here to stay in many ways, and I think it's a part of what you now need to be part of the DNA of how you 
put events together for people because, um, you know, A, it's not going to go away quickly, but B, people are realizing that they can still participate in an event if they can't go to Hawaii or they can't go to another location at that time. Okay. Uh, Thomas, I don't want to shortchange you, but do you think you have time to do that brief presentation? Uh, sure. I'll, I'll, um, okay. I'll skip a couple of sections and try. Okay. To so I'm going to make you, uh, I'm going to spotlight you. Thank you very much, Michelle. And I'm going to pass around the deck that Michelle uh, presented to the entire group. And right now I wanted to, let's see. Spotlight. There we go. Spotlight. Sorry, 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 sorry. There we go. Okay, so I'd like to hear from uh, Tom Farrell right now. He's had a very interesting presentation about contracts. So take it away, Tom. Thank you, Alex. Uh, is the screen being shared? It is. Okay, good. Um, I have to say I was struck by Michelle mentioning, mentioning and talking about following your mission because I've always considered part of my mission um, getting information out to the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. There's so many rules and regulations out there and so many legal documents that business owners have to contend with, with pitfalls, um, regulations that you're not even aware of until you're either being sued or some state agency is knocking on your door. So I try to present a series of uh, informative workshops and webinars, and this is one of them. Uh, so I'm gonna talk for a couple of minutes about contracts today. Um, before you even get to the written document, I have to emphasize, don't rely on an oral agreement. Um, lawyers say an oral agreement isn't worth the paper it's written on. Um, don't rely on a letter of intent. A letter of intent is just an agreement to agree um, and generally favors the, the party with the stronger bargaining position, so I don't like them. And um, unless it's a personal guarantee that you were required to give either to a lender or a landlord, um, never sign personally, always sign in the name of your corporation or LLC. Um, the most general parts of a contract are the price, which lawyers refer to as consideration. It's just a thing that's being paid. Um, when the contract involves intellectual property, uh, such as a trademark, um, some of the price will be discussed in terms of royalties that are owed. That can get complicated. Sometimes it's a function of sales or gross sales or net sales or whatever. Um, the next most important part of a contract is its term, how long it's going to last. Um, a lot of online companies use automatic renewal. We, we talk about the subscription model, which is fine, but be aware that there's a brand new New York state law just effective February 9th of this year um, that imposes new disclosure obligations on companies that are offering subscriptions that renew automatically. Um, and if you have questions about that or would like some information, please don't hesitate to contact me. I'll put my information up shortly. Um, Generally speaking, um, indemnification is a process by which if you goof, if you mess up and it costs the other party money, um, an indemnification clause means you have to make them whole. And then that's usually a two-way street. If they goof and they don't get you your equipment and you lose tens of thousands of dollars because you can't perform your obligations, if you have a good indemnification clause, the other party, be, party will be responsible for making you whole. Uh, that is something uh, I'm going to skip down to remedies because um, indemnification and mechanics liens are um, part of a broader category of protections called remedies. Um, a remedy is a way to undo any damage that has been done by a breach of the contract, and they fall into two broad categories. A remedy at law usually means money. You just get the money that you lost replaced. And then there are equitable remedies, which involves things like temporary restraining orders or injunctions, um, specific performance and some things like that. Depending upon the nature of the service you're providing, you may want one, one or more of the equitable remedies. Um, so in the, in the case of uh, a contract for developing an application, for example, okay, um, you'll have a license agreement, which means that the licensor, the person or company that owns the app, the intellectual property, and the licensee, the person that wants to use it, come together to form an agreement to um, specify the terms under which the licensee can use the app, okay? And to do that, both parties need to make what's called representations and warranties. And you'll see this in a lot of different contracts. A representation is just a statement that some fact or circumstance is true now. 
And a warranty is a promise that it will stay that way. Um, in the future. So warranties operate on the future. So if I said to you, for example, that my corporation is duly organized and good standing as a representation, that means it is now. If I make a warranty to that effect, it means I'm going to keep it that way. I'm going to make sure my corporation isn't dissolved. So that's the difference. It's the difference between now and later. Okay. And in any contract, both sides should be making representations and warranties. All right. Um, Oh, I got repetitive here. I'm sorry. We spoke about remedies a little bit already. Um, the boilerplate is the stuff. <laughs> That's the stuff where I make my living. It's, it's the four or five pages at the end of the contract no, nobody else reads. Um, but there can be a lot of pitfalls in there. There'll be um, things like a, a governing law clause or a form selection clause. That's murder. If you're doing business with a customer or a supplier who's out of state and you're using their contract, their forum selection clause is going to say that any arbitration or litigation has to take place in their state. So that if they breach and you have to sue them, you got to sue them in Wisconsin or North Dakota or whatever it is. And that can be negotiated. There, there are ways to get around that. Um, and there's a couple of things like that in the boilerplate that you need somebody to pay attention to. Uh, let me talk just for a minute about intellectual property because not only in, in um, contracts for the development of applications, but in manufacturing too. If somebody's got a trademark, a cartoon character, for example, or something like that, um, the manufacturer needs a license to manufacture clothing and, and other articles like that with that trademark on it. Um, trademark is different from copyright. Copyright attaches to works of authorship, books, magazines, music, et cetera, et cetera. And copyright, surprisingly, attaches right away. Um, as soon as you create it and reduce it to writing, you have certain copyrights. You get better protection if you register the copyright with uh, the federal office. Um, it's much harder to protect your copyright if you don't, but it doesn't attach right away. Patents and trademarks um, are, are a little bit different. A patent is for devices and processes. So like I said, if you come up with a, a better mousetrap or a recipe, for example, with a secret ingredient or combinations of ingredients, that's patentable. Um, some computer code is patentable too. A trademark, a trademark protection is for a mark or symbol um, and sometimes colors and sounds even um, designed to identify the source and protect it uh, because it is distinguished from others. And again, you, you have better protection if you register your patent or trademark with the US Patent and Trademark Office, okay? Now, one of the less commonly known forms of intellectual property is trade secrets, okay? Trade secrets are not ordinarily thought of as intellectual property, um, but they can be something that's very valuable to your business. You can spend years to get, for example, putting together a customer list or developing your pricing strategy and developing uh, a list of sources or vendors. And that's a trade secret that's worth protecting. Um, certainly any device that you have that is patentable or any mark that you're using in business that is uh, trademarkable is also part of your uh, trade secret. Well, it's not a trade secret, but it's intellectual property. Okay, um, trade secrets and other intellectual property can be protected both with non-disclosure agreements, which means that your employees can't take any of that trade secret information and disclose it to somebody else, and non-competition agreements, which are a little broader. Um, and honestly, ladies and gentlemen, they're falling to disfavor more and more, starting with California, which has pretty much essentially banned non-compete agreements. Um, and then that's uh, moving east, unfortunately. Um, it's, it's probably going to be harder and harder to enforce non-compete agreements down the road. Um, so if you have a valuable intellectual property um, or if you have trade secrets and there are employees who have access to that who could damage you if they went and left for a competitor, I suggest you think about getting them signed to non-disclosure agreements, definitely, and non-compete agreements for now with the understanding that maybe a couple of years from now, the non-compete agreement may not be enforceable. Um, can't hurt in the meantime though. Now for contracts for services, I mentioned earlier that I'm looking for independent contractors. Um, the reason I like to prepare contracts for services is because it gives the person who's providing services protection for themselves. We can work in that indemnification clause where we can work in um, a limitation of liability. You wind up using your own contract. And once I prepare it for you, you can use it over and over and over again because the body doesn't change. 
The only thing that will change from job to job or from customer to customer, the way I write it, is something called a statement of work. Just what it says, an itemized list of services. And you can have that attached to the body of your contract. So that's the only page you have to change from job to job, customer to customer. So um, an independent contractor for services, uh, I, I just think that's a nice time-saving uh, protective device, okay? Um, for services involving the construction and home improvement industries, there is a special New York State labor law section regarding independent contractors because um, there's a widespread practice in these two industries. It happens elsewhere too, but it is very prevalent in construction and home improvement. It's the practice of classifying employees as independent contractors. This is a broader problem, but it's particularly horrible here because it means, um, what it frequently means is that unsophisticated workers with you know, not a lot of education are classified as independent contractors so that their employers don't have to pay withholding taxes, social security, workers' comp, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the truth is, and this will come as a surprise to some people, that it is not up to the worker and the employer to decide if the worker is an employee or an independent contractor. That's a determination made by law. This is a subject of another workshop I do, it's a separate 45 minutes, so I'm just gonna give you the skinny here. Um, generally speaking, the more control you exercise over the worker, the more likely it is that that worker is your employee, not an independent contractor. And you know, think of it as a continuum. So the more control you exercise, um, if you're determining hours, order of work, what supplies to use, if you're giving training, um, that kind of thing, that, that person is an employee, whether or not you wanna call them an independent contractor. And the reason I refer to FOMO, the fear of missing out, is in many industries, and again, particularly in construction, there are a lot of employers who classify everybody as an independent contractor. And they can save a lot of money that way because of the things they don't have to pay for every week. Um, the problem is, as soon as somebody either gets laid off and gets ticked off about it, or gets hurt and goes to file a workers' comp claim and then discovers that they're not covered, then all of a sudden, the injured worker or the displaced worker is going to the New York State Department of Labor and labor is going to launch an investigation and that business owner is now in deep trouble because all those years that he was classifying people as independent contractors, he now is going to have to make up the social security um, contributions, um, overtime wages if he or she was not paying overtime. Um, they're going to have to get workers' comp policies. And so, I mean, it's just, you know, tons of, of violations and significant amounts of uh, fines and penalties and interest on back wages. So you might get away with it for, for a while, um, but if you get caught, man, it's, it's an expensive, expensive mistake. Um, some of you are aware that contracting with the government can be very lucrative. Um, those of you that may have an MWBE certification already uh, that is a minority or women-owned business enterprise. There's also special protections for service-disabled veteran-owned companies. Um, one of the main advantages of getting a certification like this is that when the government is um, letting out contracts for large projects, such as, for example, the JFK redevelopment, which is estimated to be worth about 32 or $33 billion, billion dollars in contracts, um, their target set aside for MWBEs is 30%. So that means roughly nine or $10 billion in contracts that the Port Authority is going to be trying to place with MWBE certified companies and service disabled veteran owned companies. So if you qualify for that certification, run out and get it, please. There's going to be a lot of money on the table in a couple of years. You can go to the Queens Economic Development Corporation. Um, New York City's SBS Small Business Solutions, and there are offices in every borough. The one in Queens is on uh, Suffern Boulevard in Jamaica. There is the Procurement Technical Assistance Center, PTAC, um, which is in Long Island City. It's, I think it's within LaGuardia Community College. And then there's a, a relatively newer agency, a, a Merchants Association of Rosedale, Laurelton, and Springfield Gardens. Um, and those neighborhoods being in proximity to JFK um, are going to be favored not only for MWBEs, but also because the Port Authority is going to try to award these contracts 
in a kind of um, a series of concentric circles. They're looking for business owners to provide services who are close to JFK and then a little bit further out and then anywhere in Queens. And if they can't, you know, put the contract out that way, they'll look elsewhere. But the Port Authority is trying to favor the neighborhoods around the airport and the MWBEs, okay? Tom? Yes. Uh, uh, we're running a little bit of short of time. Would you mind doing a part two at, at a later time? Uh, no, not at all. Okay. But uh, I wanted to give some opportunity to the, thank you for this. Uh, it's fascinating. and My pleasure. I, I hope you can make the uh, presentation available to people because I really would like them to, uh, you know, take advantage of it. So now we know uh, the, the person who can marry you. And also we've met the person who can write the prenuptial agreement <laughs> before you get married. So you have all your bases covered. Uh, and then send you on a honeymoon. And then send you on a honeymoon. You've got all your bases covered. We just need a dating service to, to set you up with somebody. Um, I can, and, I can, and I can insure it all, including you. Insure it all. Okay, so this is a, so a one-stop shop. We, uh, we got it covered here. What uh, I'd like to say, thank you very much, Tom, and thank you, Michelle. What I'd like to do before we get off uh, the call today is if anybody has uh, something in the form of a testimonial, like I mentioned, as Nancy had said, I think uh, Wendy had said, if you want to, you know, give a shout out and say thank you to somebody for some business connections that you've made, please do so right now. The floor is yours. Go ahead, Michelle. Um, yes. Yeah, so first of all, thank you to this group. Josie is always raving about this group because there's so much value here and there's so much learning and also wonderful connections. So thank you um, for that opportunity. I'd also like to thank Rachel. Um, we have used her, uh, we have worked with her multiple times, not just for like fun gifts, but also corporate gifts. And it's so easy to work with her. The product is amazing. And once all of our information has saved, like I'm never going to change because she just makes the process incredibly easy and tailored to what you need. So thank you so much to Rachel. And I also just wanted to thank Wendy um, for agreeing to sponsor JME University and give that opportunity to one student. Um, so thank you very much for your support. We appreciate it. Happy thank you. To you. Tim, go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to thank Nancy first for inviting me to join you guys today. And then secondly, just to, I think, you know, as she showed in her discussion and test for Michelle, uh, Nancy is just a, a fantastic, um, I'll call it networking partner, right? In terms of getting you the right, taking interest in what you do, understanding what your business is, uh, helping you get, con uh, get connected to those places and taking a real vested interest in um, her partner's success. So I want to thank her for that. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, Davina, was that you raising your hand? Yes. Yes, yes. I want to thank you, Alex, for this lovely uh, group gathering. Also, I want to thank Steve Carr. He, uh, he uh, made pens for me and my clients love it. So if anyone needs any supplies, I'm going to give Steve a plug. They, my clients love the pens that he made for me. So thank you, Steve, for inviting me. And thank you for a great presentation and meeting. Thank you. I see Tom Farrell and Rachel. Go ahead, Tom. Um, thanks, Alex. I wanted to thank, um, uh, oh God, now I'm blanking on her name. <laughs> the H2 Lemos. I'm sorry. Nancy, Nancy. <laughs> Nancy, yes, thank you. Listen, don't feel bad. I forget my own children sometimes. Um, <laughs> Nancy sent, sent me a, a, a client that I just wanted to say thank you for. Okay. And Rachel, go ahead. So I just have a, I have a few thank yous. I just want to say thank you to Alex and Wendy for reaching out several months ago. You know, I've been kind of out of the networking game since I had a child. And as a result of you inviting me to this group, I can't even tell you how many relationships I've built, you know, in the business that it's generated. But I also wanted to say, Michelle, it's been an absolute pleasure to work with you and Josie. We've been working together in several capacities. Um, I have been to your virtual events. There's a magician that became a client of ours that I met at a virtual event who's phenomenal. So Wendy, a bunch of you would probably give you, a bunch of us would probably give you the same referral. The other thing I want to mention, John Rafferty and I, you know, when I, my networking day started, it was in BNI five and a half years ago almost, or I don't even know how many years ago. And I've watched John grow his business. And, you know, it's interesting because we all, you know, some people go into networking because it's all about the transaction. But I just want to thank John, you know, he's become somewhat of a mentor to me. And it's, and it's really been incredible. And it takes time to, to watch how people run their business and live their life. 
to really trust them. It's not something that takes days, weeks, months. It really takes years, you know? And so I, I want to thank John, John for that. Nancy, I mean, I, I don't know if I've given this testimonial before or not. I tried to rent a car for my husband's birthday to literally drive us around New York City to check out all the top of competition. And of course, something came up with our two and a half year old, but her driver was waiting for us by the shop he had the balloons, the champagne. He and her husband just went above and beyond, even though we weren't able to have that experience. And, and it's just been wonderful. And again, Nancy has also been someone who's been somewhat of a mentor towards me. Um, and, and I really appreciate it. So a lot of thank yous. And if there's anyone I missed, I apologize. But I do think it's so important. The testimonial piece is so, so, so important. Oh. Thank you. And Mara, you get the last word. Yeah. So, uh, well, generally, I mean, thank you for having me in the group. This is a wonderful group of people and I can already see the synergies. I mean, with whom personally I could work with. Um, and yeah, thanks to Dave Solana. I just got the notification that he, oh, and also Stephen Carp. They signed, they registered their emails. It's really so easy. Today I'm thanking you, but you guys, you never know. You may win a fabulous and very expensive cruise for free. <laughs> Not completely free, but you know, you'll still have to pay airfare and taxes, stuff like that. But seriously, it's a fabulous company. If so, uh, for some reason, I'm so bent uh, uh, thinking that it's going to be my client who wins this time. So just do it. I, I have a link there. And can I send it to you, Alex, to send to the group? Thank you. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. We have another guest speaker. Stay safe. Who, who is the guest speaker next time? I have somebody from the Queen uh, from the Queen's Chamber of Commerce. Oh, okay, cool. I'll make the announcement uh, very shortly. Okay, cool. Thank you, folks. It's because he can't you. pronounce his name. Have if he can pronounce his name, he'll tell you. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody.